Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? Goal for this season, I will be trying to win the Super Bowl. I want to take Derek Carr back to Vegas. I want this defense to be the number one defense. I want this offense to be the number one offense. We all have the loftiest of goals and expectations, but it doesn't matter what we say right now. It matters what we work for, what we earn. Saints veteran defensive end Cam Jordan, very clear about what his goal is, what his goal has always been as a member of the New Orleans Saints, get to and win a Super Bowl. Will he do it in 2023? Ross Jackson was there as the Saints uh, took their first step toward a black and gold Super Bowl. Day one of training camp was Wednesday. Ross Jackson was there. He's good enough to join us now. How are you, dude? Hey, buddy. Doing great, man. Thanks for having me on. Always a pleasure to chop it up with you. Man, uh, we appreciate the time. Uh, when you go out for the first day, and obviously before there's pads, what are you hoping to, to see or, or take away? Yeah, I think the easiest part of what you watch without pads is, you know, how's the offense rolling? How's the quarterback getting in and out of the huddle? How's the quarterback connecting with the skill position players? Things like that. Defense is a little bit trickier to watch, as well as, of course, the trenches of the offensive and defensive line. But when it comes down to watching the defense, you just want to kind of see, all right, are the guys in the front seven in position to make a play? We saw a few of the, those examples, guys like Peyton Turner, uh, the undrafted free agent out of Ohio State. Believe it or not, there's another Buckeye on the New Orleans Saints roster <laughs> and Deron Page. Uh, you know, he had, he had a really nice day today, too. So really, you're just kind of trying to see, okay, how's the communication going? Are they moving in and out of plays, uh, you know, in and out of the huddle uh, smoothly? Are, are they running into any issues with false starts, anything like that? Didn't see a ton of that, although there were some examples of it, which you should expect for day one. And so that's kind of what you're monitoring right now before the pads come on in a couple of days. You know, a lot of times um, you can tell things, either good or bad, just physically, like how guys handle the offseason, like are guys overweight? Does someone look like he's in particularly good shape? Did he make over his body? Any of those, like, just casual observations day one? Nobody that stood out for all the wrong reasons, but I, I will good. mention um, uh, Jamal Williams. Jamal Williams looks to have slimmed down quite a bit. Uh, you know, when he finished his season in Detroit, he was around 230 pounds. My understanding is that he's hovering around 217 now. So he's kind of closer to Alvin Kamara's weight than wow. he was, uh, you know, his weight in Detroit. Now, I think that's an important highlight because one of the first things that, you know, Jamal Williams told us during his introductory press conference outside of who his favorite Pokemon was, <laughs> was that he wanted to be able to prove that he was going to do more. Uh, and that that's my joy with Jamal Williams, by the way. That's not me making fun of Jamal Williams because his favorite Pokemon is also my favorite Pokemon. <laughs> but um, <laughs> that's, that's not what you brought me on to today's show for. So uh, what I, you know, but one of the things that he talked about was that he wanted to prove that he was more than just this short yardage goal line red zone back. And so when you see him slim down, it kind of suggests that, okay, he's working on, you know, the pass catching side of his game and he wants to be able to turn those corners, hit the, uh, you know, be able to run those routes, all these other things that maybe some of that weight might have impacted his ability to do so and be able to get around the corner as a runner and outside run situations as opposed to between a tackle run situations. So it kind of leans itself or lends itself to kind of hinting that, hey, Jamal Williams' role in New Orleans is going to be a little bit more expansive than that which we saw in Detroit. Uh, we also got to see Jimmy Graham uh, in a Saints uniform for the first time, the second time. Uh, how did he look? Uh, well, okay, so he, <laughs> okay. he looks like Jimmy. He, he looked like Jimmy Graham, but I don't want to. I don't want to get people too excited. I don't, I'm not talking about a 2013 NFL touchdown leaders, you know, Jimmy Graham. But you know, there was a moment where there was a pass that was thrown to him uh, on air. So this is without a defender, but it was kind of thrown to him a little bit out of position, and you know how it goes with the routes on air. The quarterback throws one, and then there's some collection of other quarterbacks and trainers that are throwing the others. And so one of those passes ended up making its way over to Jimmy Graham, and he had to leap and outstretch and, and, and be able to make a catch, and, and he was able to do that comfortably. I, you know, I, I think one of the things that a lot of people expected when it came to the Jimmy Graham signing initially was, oh, okay, it's a one-day contract, and then he'll retire. And that's, that's not what this was. This was a full-on one-year deal, but he still has to go out there during training camp and prove, hey, I can still play this game after being away from football for a year. And I think that he started off on the right foot there. Um, I don't think this is going to be a Kiko Alonso situation where he gets a day out there and then says, you know what, this ain't for me. 
I'm good. Mm. Uh, I do think that Jimmy Graham looked a lot more conditioned than I expected, a lot more in shape, moving a lot more fluidly than I expected um, for his first day of camp. And so I would say positive reviews so far, but let's see if he can maintain it. Do you think he makes this team? I think that there's a chance, but I do think he has to earn his spot. I, I don't, you know, I think that there's a lot of folks that have said, oh, well, you know, you bring Jimmy Graham back. There's no way he doesn't make the roster. And it brings me back to days that, you know, Kat Terrell and I were talking about this not so long ago, but like Champ Bailey showing up in camp and not making the roster mm-hmm. and things like that. Like this isn't, you know, Nigel Bradham a couple of years ago. This isn't unusual to see, you know, a veteran player that has some ties to either coaches or the organization, whatever it might be coming into training camp and then seeing if they're able to make things happen. But I don't think that you just graduate him and say, all right, flip your tassel to the other side. You're a New Orleans Saint now. You're on the big three-man roster. He's got to be able to show some of it. And Dennis Allen kind of spoke about it after practice today when he mentioned, you know, one of the things that he learned from Sean is that when it comes to these veteran guys, I don't need to see it every day, but I need to see it. And so I think that that's going to be what you're going to expect from Jimmy Graham is that he'll have some base where you don't really see him but he's got to show off on some of these other days. And so if he can do that, I think he has a path and there's a specialized role for him on the roster to help in the red zone. Uh, but I wouldn't write it in pin just yet. Uh, Ross Jackson is with us, Locked on Saints. Great time to uh, subscribe up to the pod if you haven't done so yet. And if you haven't done so yet, why not? What are you doing? Um, rookies. I'm always interested in how the rookies look uh, day one. A- any notable observations from any of the uh, the new guys? Yeah, I'll start with Kendra Miller because he was probably the one that we were most looking forward to seeing just because we didn't get to see him during OTAs and mini camps and things like that. He looked pretty uh, pretty good. I mean, he, he got a couple of opportunities there. Obviously, he's in a little bit of a ramp-up period to borrow Dennis Allen's phrasing. Uh, but he looked comfortable. Um, you know, he got a couple of runs, got, got a couple of moments where he was able to be targeted in the passing game as well. He came up with those catches. So that's what you want to see from him so you got an opportunity to see that. Brian Brzee, Isaiah Foskey, the first and second round of picks out of Clemson and Notre Dame, respectively. A little bit tougher to kind of gauge them because they're on the defensive line, like what we opened up talking about. These guys aren't tackling anybody, right? So, you know, you have to wait and see, like, are they in position? Are things coming together? Do they look confused? Do they look lost? And so what I can say is that they look like they knew what they were doing. They understood the assignment. They were able to get out there and be able to work with guys like Colin Saunders and Nathan Shepard and uh, Cam Jordan and so on. And so those are, are, are positive marks for them, but a little hard to stand out until the pads come on a little bit later on this week. So that's really well we're, where we'll be paying attention for them. Uh, he's on Twitter at Ross Jackson Nola. Give him a follow. Um, anybody create an moment today? I can't think of Good. one. Good. It's not, it's, yeah, you know, and it, it's not to say that like, oh, everything Matt was perfect. Just oh. go, they don't even need to practice anymore or anything like that. It's just more so that, like, there weren't really... I mean, if you go out there and you create an uh moment day one, that right. really says something, right? Uh, and so I'm, I'm happy to say that I, I didn't catch any of those moments. Um, the, the the two things that I will highlight are uh, we had a Kirk Merritt fumble to where something got, you know, to where a pass got punched out, uh, or maybe it was a run, and then after, you know, they will always extend that play and keep working beyond the uh, beyond the route. And he had a punch out by, I think it was Isaac Yadam, if I remember correctly, who also uh, would have what would have been a, a safety, effectively. And then there was another catch and run by Juwan Johnson that was punched out by Andrew Dowell. So there's two ways to look at this, and this is always the tale of training camp, right? Is the defense really good, or right. should we can be concerned about ball security on the offensive side? So those might be the closest to those kinds of moments, but those are manageable moments that, hey, the defense made a good play, there's a positive to that as opposed to just somebody just overbearingly doing something. Else. Did you watch the kickers? I did. Yeah. Uh, Will left with six of six today, going anywhere from an extra point to 44 okay. yards on the left hash. So he was perfect on the day. Okay. I uh, So I did this earlier today. I don't know if you've done this exercise yet, but everybody, mm-hmm. well, everybody always puts out their roster projections, right? The 53 man projection. So I took a little uh-huh. bit of, of a different tact. Like, I looked and I said, okay, who are absolute locks? Like, you are making mm-hmm. this team. And, mm-hmm. and, I, and I counted 34. Now, like, for example, I didn't have Jake Hayner as a lock. He's probably right. going to make the team, right? But I'm yeah. saying, like, absolute, no doubt. Like, you, are, you have made this team not even a question. I had 34. So, it, and one of them, by the way, was not Will Lutz. Because I think there's at least a chance... A chance, Ross? A chance that group beats him out, yeah? 
Yeah, I mean, there's a chance that it's there. And, and Dennis Allen has told us before, or told us yesterday, rather, that like he believes that the battles at the specialist positions, so the kicker position, but also the, the punter position, are genuine battles. They're legitimate battles. And Dennis Allen, from the very beginning, his first year, we saw him go up there and draft Alante Taylor in the second round. Yeah. And a lot of people were wondering, okay, what is he going to do? Are they going to move him to safety? Is he going to do something a little different? But... Uh, for Dennis Allen, he said, no, I want to bring in competition to push guys like Marshawn Lattimore and Paulson and Debo, the guys that are locks on the roster. And so now we're seeing that continue here in a year too. Um, you, you bring in competition and either the guy that you bring in to compete works out and then you have a better option or the incumbent guy is forced to improve in order to maintain his job. And so it's a legitimate competition. It might not ultimately lead to Will Lutz, quote unquote, losing his job or not being on the roster, but certainly the possibility is there. And if nothing else, that competition and breeding that competition will certainly help to kind of push Will Lutz, push Blake Gillikin a little bit further to, towards their, you know, furthering development. And, and everyone knows who Will Lutz can be, but he had that core surgery. Look, they still have the kind of lingering issues last year. He was second lowest in field goal percentage across the NFL with every kicker that tried at least 10 field goals uh, throughout the season. So I think there's obviously room for improvement there and room for kind of getting back to who everybody believed Will Lutz was, the one that earned the nickname that everyone knows. Uh, and so I, I think that there is, the, I think there is some legitimacy there uh, for sure. And I think the gap is certainly present and, and it's wide, but I, look, I, I think having the competition here is valuable. All right, he is Ross Jackson. He's on Twitter, at Ross Jackson Nola. Give him a follow. Make sure you're subscribed up to the Locked on Saints podcast. Saints uh, day one in the books. I'll be at it again tomorrow. Thank you, man. We appreciate the time as always. Thanks, buddy. Always a pleasure. Take care, stay safe, and I'll talk to you soon. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.